Hey sheepies, welcome to the first day of my 30 day SFX challenge. Um, it is the 1st of October today and I am filming the first video which is basic cuts. Today I'm going to be transforming myself into Zaz from the Batman universe. He is known for every person he kills, he puts a tally mark on his body. Therefore, I'm going to be creating scarred tally marks on my chest and some of my arm. And on my face, I'm going to be creating new recent cuts into his face. This is also my first video in my new space setup. I'm in my family's garage and I have my own space to do my makeup, my body paint, everything with beautiful natural light as you can see. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Hey sheepies, welcome to day one. So first I'm covering some blemishes of mine with some concealer and then I'm going to blend it in with a damp beauty blender. Now the product today that we will be, we will be using to create our cuts is uh, Third Degree, which is a part A and B silicon. You mix equal parts together of A and B and it creates a chemical cure that creates a silicon substance. It sets in about five to 10 minutes, depending on the temperature that you're in. Now mixing this, as you can see, I am cleaning my palette knife in between every single time I take it out of the container and put it on the palette as we do not want to cross contaminate these. If, if any part of A gets into jar of B or vice versa, they will set and be unusable. So you wanna make sure that you're really cautious that you're not cross contaminating these jars as it can ruin the entire pots. Because I know how expensive silicon is and how not readily available it is for beginners, throughout this 30 day challenge, I will be going over more basic ways and more beginner friendly versions of this. In the description of each of these 30 day challenge videos, I will have all the products I use and the places that I got them in case you want to try out some of the products for yourself. So here I'm using the side of my palette knife to place down the silicone onto my face. I'm simply just dragging it onto my face, make sure it's making contact and then dragging it down so I get the shape that I want. This is also when the silicone was halfway set so it's a lot easier to work with and not as liquidy. And for my forehead, I did a kind of V pattern and left the top open. And just before the silicon on the side of my face set, I went in using my palette knife and dug out the middle so that we could have a cut type of shape. Now I'm going in with a fan brush and alcohol activated paints and using a red I'm going around all the edges of the cuts simply to give the appearance of irritation. Next I'm using a fine stipple sponge. Um, again, dipped in that red alcohol activated paint and stippling around to give a more textured and broken up look. And in with some dark reds and some deep burgundy and purples and going into the insides of the cut that we created. I'm doing this with a very small um, fine eyeliner brush just so it's easier to get into these small crevices that we've created. Next I'm adding a really deep purple and going in to where the deepest bits of these cuts would be. The deepest points depend on how your cut is created and where there would be skin flaps and such. So look at reference photos and go from your own personal opinion. I repeat this process on my forehead wound as well. Yeah. 
Next on my eyes, I'm going in and using a red cream colour underneath my waterline. And I'm blending it out with a fluffy brush. I'm then going in with some purples and burgundies just to give myself some tired looking eyes. So I'm going in on my inner corner and just underneath my eye. Also blending that out with a fluffy tapered circle brush. I also use my fingers to blur the effect even more. Then I go in and add a navy dark blue just in the inner corners of my eye. Again, using the fluffy brush to blend. The next I'm going in and deepening my wounds even further with an even darker plum color, just to give it more of a gory, disgusting look. I'm adding some blood into my wounds, so I'm using some runny fast flow blood and some runny dark blood. So here I'm using the same stipple sponge that we used for the irritation and I'm dipping it into the blood and stippling it around the wound. Next I'm creating a lip cut on my lip. I'm also using alcohol activated paints and cream paints as it is near the lip to create a simulation of a cut. I then add blood on top of the simulated cut and again use the same stipple sponge method to sponge around the lip. I then dipped my fingers in my runny blood and went to town on my face and chest. I was simply just using my fingers here Go in and start to use the same coarse sponge and start to swipe it around as almost as if my claws have been in there or something. Just to give it a more textured effect instead of just fingerprints. I do this all over my face, my chest, and I do it on my hands and wrists so that it's in shot when I do photos and posing. Hey guys, so this is the completed look. Um, it went in a very different direction than I thought it would. But sometimes you start out in makeup wanting to do one thing and it turns out going to a different direction. So I went a different direction. So as you saw, I did start out as Zaz using third degree to create his tally marks. But then I just how I was colouring it didn't it didn't work, so we just decided to create an insane crazy person who claws at her face. So yeah, that's where I went with this. I went for um crazy lady who got clawed or chicken attack. What do you think? That's a bit scary. I'm trying to scare her. And she says I have a vagina on my head. Great. Thanks, Kayla. That was really disappointing. Tries to scare her and all I get is, you have a vagina on your head. Well, thank you, Michaela, for that revelation. Now you guys are going to not unsee it.